Jame Roldos Aguilera. Jame Roldos Aguilera, November 5, 1940, May 24, 1981, was 33rd president of Ecuador from August 10, 1979, until his death on May 24, 1981. In his short tenure, he became known for his firm stance on human rights. Early Life and Career Roldos was born in Guayaquil on November 5, 1940. He attended high school at the Vicent Rockefeller National School. He studied law and social sciences at the University of Guayaquil. He was an excellent student and won many awards, medals, and scholarships. At the age of 37, he ran for president on a populist platform. In the first round, he received the greatest number of votes, but not the 50% plus one needed to avoid a runoff. In December 1978, during the nine-month interval between the first and second rounds of the election, an alleged plot to assassinate him supposedly by eight Americans who were later charged with archaeologic relics trafficking was reportedly foiled by the military government. He won the second round of elections against Sixto Duran Ballin and assumed office on August 10, 1979, in a ceremony attended by several world dignitaries, among them American Secretary of State Cyrus Vance with First Lady Rosalind Carter accompanying and Spanish Prime Minister Adolfo Suárez. Presidency 1979-1981 On October 10, 1979, Roldo signed a decree reducing the work week to 42 hours. On November 2, 1979, he issued another decree doubling the minimum wage to 4,000 suckers per month. $160 in 1979 U.S. dollars. On March 8, 1980, he established the National Development Plan. On April 15, 1980, he established a committee of notables to search for a solution for the power struggle in the National Congress, presided over by his former mentor Assad Bukharam. He named 1981 the Year of Advances. In late January and early February 1981, there were border skirmishes with Peru in the Cordillera del Condor. Clashes occurred in the regions of Pacuisha, Mayacu, and Macanaza. With great skill and diplomacy, he left the territorial dispute to the arbitration by the Organization of American States. Roldoz's most important accomplishment was his policy in support of human rights in an era in which most Latin American countries were military dictatorships. In September 1980, Roldos met with the democratically elected presidents of the Andean region, Venezuela, Colombia, and Peru proposed the signing of a Charter of Conduct, in which the principles of universal justice and human rights were reaffirmed, signaling protection of human rights as a more important principle than non-intervention. His stance on human rights led him to clash with fellow Latin American leaders, in one instance at a summit in Colombia, El Salvador's José Napoleón Duarte U.S. backed dictator who came to power with the coup that set off the Salvadoran Civil War mocked Roldos for being young and inexperienced. Roldos answered, I may be inexperienced, but my government perches on a mountain of popular votes, while yours is perched on a mountain of corpses. This policy was questioned by American conservatives, who considered it an excuse to justify Soviet meddling in the region especially in Central America. The United States condemned the Roldos Doctrine, as they did that of Panamanian Omar Tarajos, who also died in a plane crash several months later. Following the 1980 U.S. presidential elections, appointing Ronald Reagan, bilateral relations with the USA became strained. Roldos declined to attend Reagan's January 1981 inauguration on these grounds. His foreign policy initiatives also attracted the Sandinista government of Nicaragua and with the Front Democratico in El Salvador, which opposed the military regime in that country. Death On Sunday, May 24, 1981, a Beechcraft Super King Air carrying the president and his entourage of to a military ceremony in honor of the fallen in the short war with Peru crashed into Huerapungo Hill, the crash at 2360 meters over sea level 7,800 fort left no survivors. Killed along with the president were First Lady Martha Bucaram, 
the Minister of Defense Marco Sabia Martinez and his wife, two aide-de-camps, a flight attendant and both pilots. The bodies were reportedly burned beyond recognition. Investigation and Irregularities The controversy about the cause of the crash began immediately when the Accident Investigation Committee Junta Investigadora de Accidents, JAA of the Ecuadorian Air Force, attributed the crash to navigational pilot error. A Rosmina Inquiry First Investigation A parliamentary commission formed months later, led by then MP and former President Otto Arosmina, following pressure from the families of the victims and political groups allied with the President, found contradictions and inconsistencies in the JAA report, but could not reach definitive conclusions, especially since the aircraft that was purchased by the Air Force to operate. A team of the Zurich police also conducted an investigation and concluded that the plane's motors were shut down when the plane crashed into the mountain. This opinion, which contradicted the Air Force report, was not investigated further by the Ecuadorian government. Randa Inquiry Second Investigation Theories on Causes of Death U.S. Involvement The American author and activist John Perkins, in his book Confessions of an Economic Hit Man, asserts that Roldos was assassinated because his plan to reorganize the hydrocarbon sector would have threatened U.S. interests. The economic relations were strained by Roldo's plan for a new hydrocarbon law not favored by U.S. firms, which reportedly engaged in a lobbying and public relations campaign against Roldo's government amongst Ecuadorian and U.S. politicians, as well as with the religious class, to the point that Roldo's accused missionaries from the summer shortly after sending his legislative package on the oil sector reform in early 1981 roldos warned foreign interests that if they would not contribute to the progress of the ecuadorian people they would have to leave the country additionally the aforementioned pact on human rights reached with colombia and peru was seen by the reagan administration as a tilt toward the soviet union just months after roldos died Another Latin American leader, who had been at odds with U.S. interests in the control of the Panama Canal, Panama's Omar Tarajos, died in what was allegedly just a plane crash, which also is perceived by some to have been a CIA-conducted assassination. It is worth noting that Roldos had applauded Jimmy Carter on his stance regarding the return of the Panama Canal after the Tarajos-Carter treaties. Historian Niall Ferguson has described Perkins's allegations as implausible. Ferguson advances that that U.S. economic involvement in Ecuador was minimal less than 5% of total U.S. foreign aid went to Ecuador, and Ecuador purchased less than 5% of total American exports and inadequate to motivate such drastic action. Operation Condor the documentary The Death of Jane Roldos, which premiered in 2013, explores Roldos' death using interviews, archives, and documentary research. It was directed by Manolo Sarmiento, who is close to the Roldos family. According to the film, the Ecuadorian military was heavily sympathetic, if not directly involved, with Operation Condor, the regional repressive apparatus set up by the military dictatorships of the southern cone countries Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Consequently, and according to Richelieu Lavoyer, who happened to be commander-in-chief of the Ecuadorian army at the time of the crash, Argentinians and Chileans involved themselves in the conspiracy to enroll those regime, as they saw it sympathetic to left-wing causes and governments. New inquiries, revelations, and theories is theories Almost immediately after the screening, Attorney General Galo Kairaboga announced his decision to reopen the investigation. In April 2015, he announced to the National Assembly that, based on an alleged CIA document declassified in 2014, Ecuador had joined Operation Condor in mid-January 1978. According to this document, participation would have occurred through the intelligence services of the armed forces, for this purpose, it is alleged, and also reported in the documentary, that an Argentine general would have visited Quito and installed, in the Ministry of Defense, 
a telecommunications system named Condortal. The Navy was in charge of telecommunications, while the Air Force was in charge of psychological warfare. Additionally, an offer by Chile's Augusto Pinochet to train Ecuadorian personnel at the Military Intelligence School in Santiago would have followed. In May 2016, on the 35th anniversary of the crash, Attorney General Kairiboga announced the discovery of several documents, audiovisual and material evidence that was used in the first official inquiry in an Ecuadorian Air Force depot. Reportedly among the evidence were some small remains of the ill-fated Super King Air. Kairiboga announced that some of that evidence would be sent to Brazil for further analysis and that he would embark on further investigation among military installations, to look out for more remains from the aircraft. The Roldos family asked to be kept informed on the new investigation. Kairoboga said that up this discovery collaboration from the armed forces had been cold, but that better disposition now existed. It is worth noting that former Defense Minister Fernando Cordero had declared in 2015 that despite documentation having been declassified in 2013, Several files had been incinerated, and other documents lost, a fact that his institution would investigate. Cordero added that previous information requests by the Attorney General had been obstructed by missing or disorganized investigation records. Legacy Despite a downturn in his popularity during the last months of his administration, due to the post-war economic measures, Roldo's death immortalized the last words of his famous speech delivered on the day of his death. We have worked 21 months under a constitutional government when in countries like ours. Having a democratic stability means conquering it daily. Ecuadorians, we were honest. We continue to be honest in each and all of our actions. Actions, not words, will prove our intentions. It's the time of work and solidarity, not the time for strikes, threats or rumors, let's prove we love our country by complying our duties. Our great passion is and should always be Ecuador. Our we don't want this Ecuador to be enmeshed in the insignificant but in the most important in the untiring, building up a destiny of nobility, a heroic Ecuador that won in Pichincha, an Ecuador with brave people, brave fighters from Pacuisha, Bishinaza and Mayeku who died in action in the trenches a heroic Ecuador of the Condor Mountain Range. An attorney, Leon Roldos, was later a candidate for president in 1992, 2002, and 2006. Jane Roldos's daughter, Martha Roldos Bucaram, was a presidential candidate in the 2009 elections. Jane Roldos's son, Santiago Roldos Bucaram, is a journalist and playwright. Jane Roldos's brother-in-law, Abdallah Bukaram founded the populist Ecuadorian Roldosist Party and was elected president of Ecuador. He governed from August 1996 to February 1997 when he was removed by the National Congress on the grounds of mental incapacity. Martha Roldos has said that the Ecuadorian Roldosist Party has corrupted her father's ideals. Jane Roldos's most important legacy was his support for human rights. The Roldos Doctrine holds that the international community's concern for a country's internal human rights situation is not a violation of the country's sovereignty.